Welcome to Boys in Unison Live! Tonight we're back, baby, back in black! And tonight we're gonna talk about South Park! Metacritic score! We're gonna talk about Naughty Dog being naughty! And we're also gonna talk about how Sony is gonna put some games on the Switch! Oh my god! Hell is freezing over today! But welcome, welcome to Force in Unison Live! Yeah! Hello, Caliones. How you doing tonight? Hey, how you doing, Dantes? How you doing, everybody? And I do apologize, Dantes. Seems like he tried to overdo it. Uh, sometimes he comes up as a singer or sometimes as, as like a WWE fighter or impersonating The Rock, but uh, he'll, he'll get better as we go. So I'm trying to get my mood up because before before this uh, podcast, uh, I got a call from work and it, it made me sad. So I'm not fired. Don't worry about it. It's just emergency <laughs> shit, you know, I, have, I deal with. Uh, but we're here. We're live. We're forcing Unison live. So let's do quickly our rigmarole, shall we? Welcome, everybody, to Forcing Unison live right here at the Forcing Unison gaming channel. Please remember to subscribe, like, and comment. So you can make these two crazy MFs happy. Also, remember, we have a Nintendo podcast call to get in and get out Nintendo podcast every Monday, 9.30 Eastern time. You can download that podcast on SoundCloud and iTunes for free. Rate us over there so you can show us some love. Also, we do have a small Facebook page call at Forcing Unison Gaming. And finally, and this is finally... Go to ChigueroSnews.com and give some clicks and love to my boy, Caliones. With all that said, Caliones, this shit is packed tonight with some uh, interesting news topics. But let's start Let's start with the first piece of news, Caliones. Okay, well, uh, the first piece of news is you know, one of those games that everybody was anticipating, that everyone wanted to, uh, everybody wanted to get their hands on. And it is the South Park, the fractured butt hole. We are whole. I should have said it. We're one. We're whole. Yes, go ahead. Yes, but uh, the game currently has uh, 49 critic reviews on Metacritic. is uh, has an 80 uh, Metacritic score, and overall, it's been receiving uh, either very positive or mixed reviews, no negative reviews. So it seems like it is another worthwhile addition, you know, for the franchise. Um, I'm, I do have to say that the original, well, or the, the previous one, the Stick of Truth did score uh, higher uh, when it came to the Metacritic score, but this one is still in the 80s, 80%. Uh, it's still a good score. I mean, uh, I know that we make a big deal about, you know, Breath of the Wild getting a 97 instead of a 98 or something like that, but still uh, 80% is a good score uh, for the game. So, well, uh, what do you think about the um, uh, Fractured Butt Hole? And are you going to play it? Uh, what, what, are, what do you think about the game? So I'm showing a little bit of gameplay right now so you guys at home can enjoy our sweet voices while you watch gameplay. But if I'm interested in playing the South Park, the Fractured But Whole, of course, Caliones, as you know, I'm a trophy whore, so I platted the first game. Uh, and I'm looking forward to plat this game too. But like I typically always do unless I'm really interested in a game, I'm going to wait until the season pass is over when all the content is there in the game and then I will buy the game. I always do that. I have taken exceptions this year when I bought games like Horizon Zero Dawn, Uncharted, uh, and even uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild before all the content is out. I prefer to play the game while all the content is out so I can beat it just once and do everything at that time. Uh, so that's, that's on me. I typically, like I said, I'm not a fan of DLC. I'm not a fan of season passes. I'm not a fan of microtransactions. I'm just an old school gamer. That's pure and simple. So I like to have the complete package. So in this case, for South Park, this is the same. I'm going to wait until everything comes out. Uh, but I, the game seems great. <laughs> right now, there's a scene showing where the boys are in a strip club. Yeah, uh, that's uh, probably uh, interesting when you have a... Yeah, uh, I don't know, 10-year-olds in a strip club. Yeah, but anyway, uh, uh, South Park funny, the first game. Uh, uh, memorable scenes from the first game. Uh, I love the scene where you 
uh, become, a, you're looking for the gnome, so you shrink in size and you go through the house of your parents, and then you get to the rooms and your parents are having sex, and then you're fighting the gnome in the bed while your parents have sex, and then you have to uh, evade the balls from your dad coming at you side by side. <laughs> Even, and his balls got me a couple of times and killed me. Uh, and just in case, I, I, it, wasn't be, I was in, it wasn't because I wanted his balls to hit me in my face. To clarify, I just got hit and killed. Uh, so, uh, but it was funny. Funny scene, loved it, and, uh, and, and, and that game is just funny as hell. And uh, this game seems to be following that path. Funny also. Uh, I, but I know a lot of the reviewers, and uh, I don't know, Caliones, if you have a, a couple of summary or snippets there that you can share from the reviewers. But, but I think a lot of the reviewers feel that the first game was funnier. And even that the combat system on this one is deeper than the first one. They seem to enjoy the first game's combat system more, which was more like Paper Mario. But I don't know if you can, if you can give some summaries there. Well, I mean, um, I, one of the first things that they were talking about, and this is before the game came, came out, and it was something you know, slightly controversial. It was the, uh, the, the difficulty uh, of the game, how uh, the, the wider, basically, you know, the, the lighter skin you were, uh, the easier the game would be, or the darker your skin, the harder you know, the, the game would be. It would also make, you, make it harder for you to earn money. Uh, so, you know, because you would get less uh, coins or wages or anything based on uh, what you did. So it all really depended on what, I mean, it, it was, uh, you can call it a, a social you know, commentary within the game itself, uh, but in the, um, in, in, in the humor of South Park. So there's something that we've already come to expect when it comes to the South Park games and something that, I mean, at this point, nobody really feels offended or anything because, I mean, it is South Park after all. But, uh, for example... Uh, uh, IGN Spain, they say, you know, South Park is back. The Factory Bell Hulk becomes a per perfect experience for fans of the TV show. And at the same time, those who want to explore the city and fight in hard but accessible fights. With a new turn based system, uh, combat system, the game becomes closer to the Fire Emblem style, which makes it deeper. So, it's, I mean, during, uh, I guess I'm uh, talking about a similarity of the game with uh, Fire Emblem. Uh, so it seems like it does have... You know, like the you know turn-based uh, you know, strategic elements uh, for the game. So uh, Fire Emblem is something that you know. I mean, uh, when it comes to Nintendo fans, they uh, love uh, the game, and it's why I keep saying that this game has to be on the Nintendo Switch. And of course, you know, as I, I'm a, a straight fanboy, so I'm always gonna say I'm gonna see. I'm gonna always say X game needs to be on the Nintendo Switch. X the uh, Y game needs to be on the Switch. But um, either way, this is one of those games that uh, came out. Uh, all the way back on the Nintendo 64, uh, where you know the first uh, South Park game came out, and it should be coming out again. So uh, we'll we'll see. But it seems like overall they enjoy the game, uh, and like I said, all of them have been either positive or mixed reviews. Uh, no negative reviews for the game. Let me. Uh, I want to cover a couple. I want to give quickly to you know big 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 reviewers like IGN. I uh, gave it at 85 or 8.5. They say another epic length episode of the humor that kept fans of the show laughing for 20 years. The Marvel vs. DC parody delivers regular laugh out moments with only a few uh, faltering gags. And the combat soon evolves into something much more complex and e interesting than the stick of truth simple system. Uh, navigation and repetition and some of its simple puzzles mechanics drag a little, but it otherwise an excellent South Park game that's also a strong RPG. But I also want to, you know, give uh, one, the worst score was from Digital Trends, which they gave it a five. Oh, wow. Uh, and this is what they said. Uh, South Park, the fractured butthole, isn't an, an even experience. Some moments are fun and pretty funny, but other feels pretty uninspired. Exploring the town of South Park isn't as novel this time out, and it's larger, largely isn't as funny. RPG system like combat, looting, and crafting are just involved enough to make them interest interesting. But the firm emphasis is on the story and humor of the show. With the plot taking a while to develop, and with so many jokes just feeling played out, loose, or their landing, or easy and obvious, it's thought it's tough to really get excited to head back down to South Park. So Digital Trends was the rougher, I guess you could put it, of, of all the reviewers. But, you know, it is what it is. I, I, th I still think an 80 Metacritic score is a, is a good score. Uh, so I am looking forward to playing this game. I'm just going to, you know, wait until all the DLC has come out. 
and, and Carianes. There's no loot boxes in this game, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, no, I'm uh, not yet for Ubisoft for at least you know, to, you know, most of the game, so uh, not yet. It's, it's not a EA game. We'll, we'll see how, how, how long it lasts without uh, loot boxes on single-player games for, for Ubisoft games. Well, no, no, I, I do believe that Ubisoft, if, if I had to pick... Uh, Ubisoft is better than better than EA or <laughs> or <laughs> or uh, Warner Brothers. That's for sure. So again, keep showing some gameplays. While we go to the next pieces of news, I'll let the gameplay roll so you guys again can feast your eyes on some gameplay of South Park. It is the game that uh, just came out, the hottest game that has came out, and like I said, it's, it's got an 80 on Metacritic, and it's I think it's, it shows that it's still a good game. So we'll see how it goes. But Caliones, go ahead with the next piece of news. Okay, for this one, we don't really have any footage or anything like that, but uh, it talks about how Naughty Dog responded to the sexual harassment allegations that they had. So, I mean, if you didn't hear, um, uh, David Ballard, uh, he was one of the be you know, developers for the uh, for the company, and he stated that um, that he was offered twenty thousand dollars to agree to a termination and stay silent. So, you know, that he was, uh, you know, like sexually harassed in the environment. And he's and this is a guy; it's not a female. I know how you know most of the time we start thinking of. Uh, only females are the ones that you know experience those kind of things, but guys, you know, do as well. And uh, well, I'll say that allegedly, uh, David Ballard did suffer through those things. Um, so Naughty Dog came back um, after Ballard said things like, you know, my work environment became extremely toxic uh, afterwards. Um, and Naughty Dog uh, said that, um, and, and I quote. Uh, harassment and uh, inappropriate conduct have no place at Naughty Dog and Sony Interactive Entertainment. We have taken and always will take reports of sexual harassment and other workplace grievances very seriously. We value every single person who works at Naughty Dog and Sony Interactive Entertainment. It is of utmost importance to us that we maintain a safe, productive workplace environment that allows us to channel our uh, shared passion for making games. Uh, later, uh, they did say that um, we have found, uh, we have not found any evidence of having received allegations from Mr. Ballard that he was harassed in any way at Naughty Dog or Sony Interactive Entertainment. So this um, came out, um, I'll say, you know, within a day of uh, when he made the allegations. So uh, you start thinking, I mean, it's, it's 24 hours or less than 24 hours enough for somebody to do an investigation and try to see if something did happen. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it seemed like uh, he may have not properly reported what happened, and and there's no paper trail. But it's something that we're probably going to have to go back and you know like let a week go past, two weeks, three weeks, and and see what exactly comes out of it. Uh, we did. There was another person that came out and said the same thing about uh, Naughty Dog, but um, you know so far it is you know the hearsay uh, from what's going on. So uh, we would like uh, for there to be hard proof, and if if possible, but either way, uh, everybody does need to be careful. You know, regardless of you know where you work, uh, things like that should never ever be tolerated. And hopefully, especially with what's happening with uh, Weinstein, um, more and more people are going to come out. They're gonna, they're not gonna feel uh, afraid, and they're gonna be you know feeling more empowered to now than ever to you know come out and say things when it comes to this. So uh, we'll we'll see what happens with this. Uh, like I said, if if something did happen to him, hopefully whoever it was, uh, they'll find out and he'll get, I mean, uh, either fired or whatever it is that he should be getting, he or she should be getting. Uh, and if he's um, not telling the truth, then same thing, you know, but, you know, the opposite. So um, we'll, we'll see what goes on with this one. We're going to have to go back to it uh, later on. But Dantes, uh, what, what do you have to say about this? So I, I removed the gameplay because I think this is a serious topic and I'll put the gameplay back once we uh, discuss it. Uh, I honestly won't take sides on this one. I, I, I understand that people said you have to believe the victims. You have to give them space so they can come out and, and you know, and, and, and be, be, uh, have the strength to accuse their accuser or whoever did, uh, you know, the bad things that, that it did to this person. Because we don't know if it was a woman or a guy who harassed uh you know uh Baller, right Baller is his name yes uh, uh David Baller. yeah so so we don't know that so i want all victims of sexual harassment to come out and be strong and be you know and if you if this really happened to you then go ahead please be strong accuse and go through the the legal system and go through whatever it needs to take to bring whoever did wrong to you down now at the same time 
he could be an employee easily that he just got mad. He got fired from Naughty Dog, and he's just taking a, a chance of this, what's going on with with uh, all the issues that's going on with Weinstein, uh, whatever his name is, and, and to take advantage of it, too. So, we, again, we don't know. Right now, it's just you know, hearsay, she say, right? And, and and remember, we do have to, we have to believe in our, in our justice system. It is uh, innocent until proven guilty, right? So what I can say is my experience. I, I do work in a corporation. Um, I am a manager of my department. So I, I have to deal with people issues and, and stuff like that. And I can tell you that uh, my company takes issues like this, or not my company, but the company I work for. I wish I don't have that much money. Uh, the company that I work for, take issues like this very seriously. And HR department, uh, you know, if there's stuff like this, they will look into it. They will, trust me that they will look into it. So if Valor, I'm surprised a company as big as Sony that knows that there could be legal issues if you don't follow on accusations like this would just just ignore it. That's the part that I'm struggling with because Valor said that he went to HR and Sony basically fired them th uh, the next day. No company want, want the legal action on that. That is a huge deal, right? If he went to HR he 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 and he got fired the next day, he, he should have come out and, 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 and got a lawyer the next day because this is a big deal. No company. And I tell you right now, the legal department for the company that I work for, it's they would have said, no, you, you need to follow on this. You need to check on this. We need to check on it. You can't just fire the person just for the accusation. Now, I don't know if there's a bad apple in HR department for Sony that did this, but it just I just Sony being a big of a corporation, I just don't see it ignoring accusation like this so so easily so that's the part that i struggle with valor but again i'm not saying that he's lying either clarify we yeah. don't know i'm not taking sides i'm just saying how the company that i work for uh does things and they would have act on it quickly uh and i believe the big companies big corporations would do something like that quickly uh so again well, I, valor if this is true i'm sorry man hopefully you can uh you know get your life uh straight out and if it's not true, you're you're really hurting one of the you know uh, best developers in the industry. But again, I hopefully Naughty Dog will look into this and look into what they can do better, what they can do better to improve their workplace, so so employees like these don't come out. So that could be, you know, that could be beneficial in the long run for Naughty Dog to take a deep look in themselves and say, no, we need to improve on this or that. And for Valor, it just if, if it really happens, just keep trucking along and things will get better. So any any and anything else to add, Calionis? Well, uh, I'm I'm just gonna say like uh, I mean I'm being in the corporate world and being in charge of you know teams, I've experienced the same thing as well. And I've actually seen it from from both sides. I've seen it where there's been uh, questionable be, uh, behavior and people not acting the the, uh, the right way, and we've gotten rid of those people because they're uh, basically affecting the entire uh, work environment. Uh, you know, trying to take advantage of their position and, and all of those things. So I've seen that side, but I've also seen the side where uh, this person gets a write-up, this person, uh, you know, it's, um, uh, it gets fired, and they actually come back and, and they, uh, I mean, make claims that they were harassed, that they were, uh, you know, that like those things happened to them, and uh, so, and, it, and they were not true. So uh, there's, you know, for those people that come out and say, that they have been harassed and that you know all those things that have have really happened, but they, I mean, that they're lying. They're actually making a making a lot of difficult, a lot more difficult to the other people that have gone through those things that are experiencing those things. So I would, you know, I would say, please don't make it harder for the people that are that are already, um, you know, having to go through you know the uh, the harassment and live through those uh, and be afraid to you know come out and and speak. Uh, you know, those are the the, uh, the real victims. And by you, you know, taking advantage of, um, you know, because sometimes you you don't you don't have any cameras, you don't have anything, so you can take, I mean, things can be done uh, at work uh, to those people to hurt them, or at the same time, uh, you can claim make different, you know, certain claims, and they're uh, not true. So it it is uh, something that is you know is sometimes really hard on, on unless something like you know uh, one thing happens where a lot of people came out you know like a lot of females are coming out there and not just um you know new actresses and, or things like that they're like famous actresses that have been famous for decades uh they have come out they have spoken and i'm glad that you know powerful people like that are you know taking a chance and and talking because they're uh they're you know empowering all those other people and especially people that are 
you know, that also, you know, on, through Twitter, news and everywhere else, uh, you know, talking about their respective, you know, workplaces and, and having to, you know, gone through the same thing, especially, on, I mean, you can see it on your Facebook, on your Facebook account, account you're probably going to see, you know, friends, family, you know, you know, coming out and saying things or, you know, their friends, you know, like uh, talking about their experiences. So I'm glad that if there's a positive thing that has happened uh, with this is that people are finally coming out and talking about uh, all those things because you have to understand uh, some people may say, oh, they, they should have said it as soon as it happened. Uh, oh, they, they kept it quiet. So, you know, that's on them. No, you, ha you have no idea what that person's going through. You have no idea what they're struggling with, what their feelings are, uh, how helpless they feel. And, you know, different people react different ways. Uh, some people, you know, fight back. Some people are, are afraid to do something. So, you, I mean, they, they, you know, human being, they, re, we're not all the same. We are different. We react in different ways. But you have to understand, um, you know, like things like that, uh, they can scar you for life and they can make you feel powerless and uh, make people afraid to say anything. So uh, some people are going to come out right away and say it. Others are going to take time. But if this is to be true, hopefully they're going to get to the bottom of it, uh, find the people responsible and make sure that they're not going to be working at Naughty Dog or Sony uh, anymore, if that you know, were the case. Uh, but uh, well, like I said, this is something that is going to take longer and we'll probably see you know, later on what happens with it. We shall see for now, which yeah. is the waiting game and see hopefully more information comes out. So anyway, Caliones, to the next, next piece of news. Okay, well, uh, next piece of news, and it's probably one that uh, is not going to make you happy or other people that have really enjoyed you know, Horizon Zero Dawn, and it is that uh, the game will only receive one expansion. Uh, so it was confirmed by uh, Guerrilla Games uh, via Twitter that uh, they're only going to have one expansion, so basically this one that's coming out uh, really soon is going to be the last one. And there's going to be none afterwards. So probably they're, they're just prepping and getting ready for the, you know, like uh, Horizon Zero Dawn Part 2. Uh, and that's what they're concentrating on. But uh, what do you see, feel about it? Uh, if, do you think one uh, expansion is going to be enough? or That's fine. That's fine. Move on, Gorilla Games. Go to the next game. I, I Again, I'm not a fan of DLC. I think they gave a pretty good complete package the first time. Mm -hmm. And one expansion is more than enough. Uh, and I saw it, it came out. They're gonna release the complete edition in uh, in November for the holidays, right? So they're they're milking it. Uh, again, that's why I wait for shit. The Horizon is another game that I bought before you know everything was in. But admittedly, uh, Gorilla was like, no, we're doing this is the full game, and it was a full experience. Trust me. Uh, so this expansion, I think, came out because of the success of 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 Horizon Zero Dawn. So it's not like they were already working on it or planning it. But I, that's understandable. I think that's more understandable. So I'll buy the DLC and then have it in a normal package. But fine, just do one more and start working on the next one. Why do we need to do expand so much? Let's start working on it, baby. Let's go. Let's go. I'm ready for yeah. for Horizon Zero Dawn two. And I, and I know, you, I mean, you already know so far who's my, you know, which game is my pick for you know game of the year, and that I'm excited, you know, for the game that's coming out in ten days because uh, that might be up there as well. But uh, you know, Guerrilla Games and Sony, they're they really know how good of a reception uh, Horizon Zero Dawn uh, had at the beginning of the year, and they're releasing the expansion or the complete edition in November to try to give it both uh, a sales push uh, in the holidays and also um, you know, a push for Game of the Year award. So uh, that's something that they're you know trying to bank on. And but well, I mean, good luck to the game. Like again. Um, um, you you've played it, uh, based, you, know, you played both of them to completion, Breath of the Wild and Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, you have your preference with uh, Breath of the Wild, but I mean the next expansion can make it a great game even better. So uh, we'll see. So uh, I still say Horizon deserves more love than Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, got, uh, you know, Zelda Breath of the Wild got a lot of love. I'm just saying that Horizon deserves more love. Again, they got an 89 on Metacritic, but Horizon did some stuff way better than Zelda. Uh, did not like the combat system. The combat system in Horizon is just way better. I'm just telling you right now, flat out. I think what Zelda kill was the exploration. Uh, so I think both deserve to be in the talk of uh, of game of the year. Uh, but I, I still would give Horizon, uh, excuse me, Zelda the the edge, and really close edge. And I and I said that in the Get In and Get Out Nintendo podcast every Monday, 9:30 Eastern time. But uh, we we you know I get I said it. I I still give the edge to 
to sell that Breath of the Wild, but they're close. In my in my eyes, there were two awesome games. This year, this year's been great. This year's been awesome for gaming. Uh, but yeah, in ten days, <laughs> shit may change. For we'll see what happens. Who's gonna win Game of the Year? Go ahead, Kalyan. Okay, and yeah, you know, going with the next uh, piece of news. Um, yeah, you know, we have you know uh, Phil Spencer talking about uh, crossplay between the consoles, and once again, you know, the topic about uh, Xbox and PS4 crossplay uh, comes along and i mean he did say that uh they talk to sony all the time uh, with minecraft and playstation we have to be one of the biggest games on their platform is intel in terms of sales and gameplay same with nintendo the relationship with nintendo on this front has been strong they've been great supporters and we continue to collaborate with them but i think sony's view is different they should talk about what their view is and that's uh why they keep um not wanting to have cross play in between the platforms so um this this is this is what i personally think um Last generation, uh, you had uh, Xbox uh, leading the PS4, oh, the PS3, Xbox uh, 360 leading the PS3 for, for the longest time. It wasn't until the end that the PS3 actually surpassed uh, the, the Xbox uh, 360 sales. But this generation, PS4 is so far ahead uh, that they're the, uh, the clear winner. Uh, they saw the most consoles. They're selling a, a big amount of games. And they don't really have to worry uh, about, you know, making, you know, like deals like this one. Uh, because this would actually help uh, Xbox. If you are Sony and you have games on your system, uh, you're going to say, okay, so you want to play with your friends? Then you get a Sony PlayStation uh, so you can play with your friends. We're not, we're not just, just going to do a cross-play so you can get an Xbox or a Nintendo Switch and, you know, and play uh, with your friends on, on, on a Sony console. No, uh, we have the sales. We're the number one um, uh, console in the market. You, you, if you want to, you get our console, uh, so you can play with your friends. So I, I think that's they, they, they don't really have to worry about anything. They are the market leaders, and if anybody else needs to do um, things, it's going to be Xbox and Nintendo. While well, they make up uh, for it, but uh, that's just my take when it comes to it, and why they haven't, uh, they, uh, they decided not to do it so far. So what do you think, Dantes? So you brought a, a point about the the Xbox, you know, leading most of the generation. And I agree, PlayStation did win at the end for consoles sold, but I would argue that Xbox had a better generation because they sold more software, and that's what where you make the money, pure and simple, right? And they sold way more software than the PlayStation 3. But uh, we also have to remember a history lesson here for my peeps. Uh, Sony tried to do cross-play with, with Xbox last gen, but again, because the shoe was on the other side, Xbox was, well, nope. We don't want to. No, we're a closed platform. But now Xbox is all wide open. Look at us. Oh, love me. Love me. Please, we're not getting enough sales. <laughs> that's that's the difference, right? And even though I made that jokingly, I still say that cross-play should be the future. I truly agree with, with Caliones and a lot of people that did, that should be the norm. That is the right thing for the consumer. I don't care about corporations. The right thing to do for the consumers is cross-play because, one, everybody can play together with their friends. And, two, two, uh, the life of multiplayer games will ex be extended way more. But yeah, Especially if you can look at games like Lawbreakers, which uh, it had no people playing on the uh, on Steam. But, it, I mean, it still had, like, a couple uh, of them on, on PS4. I did talk to my friend where he said that he had to wait, like, you know, 10, 12 minutes until he was able to connect to one of the games and play on the ps4 which means that uh that's probably uh i mean people that already get together and they're playing it somebody dropped off and he was able to join in so um and that's one game that would benefit by having cross play in between xbox ps4 uh pc so but yes uh to your point um it, it, it would be beneficial for everybody no then that, that's what i'm saying and sony sony needs to think about it this way playstation it is, and Calionis may kill me for saying this, it is the top gaming brand. It is. It is. Uh, if you think about it, play, in four generations, PlayStation won three of them. That, that You can't deny that power, pure and simple, Calionis. So Sony has to trust that they're the top selling brand on gaming. They have to trust their power, right? So why are they so scared for having cross-platform play to force people to buy their console? You see what I'm saying, Caliones, is they should trust the name. Hey, give credit to Nintendo. Nintendo trusts their name. 
Hey, Nintendo saying, hey, we're Nintendo. People know us. Let's do cross-platform play. They understand that their 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 online is not the greatest. So they're 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 playing ball. They're playing ball. Xbox is doing it because they're sleaze balls, in my opinion. But uh but PlayStation should should instead of worrying so much about other people playing Xbox or in switches and not buying their console, they should be wary about what is right for the consumer, right? That was Sony early this generation. Again, how tables turn. PlayStation 3, baby, Sony was all about, here we are, free online. Hey, you get PlayStation Plus, look at all these free games you're getting, blah, blah, blah. While Xbox was now, you, if you want to play Netflix on the Xbox, you better pay for Xbox Live. That was, that's how shitty it was, right? Uh, uh, oh, you have to pay for online. Oh, look at that. And, and Xbox honestly started that trend, which that sucks. And now this generation, Sony started like, oh, we're, we're for the gamer. Uh, no DRM, no all that shit, and now, oh, we're number one. Now we're making decisions that, that are not consumer-based. They're not, they're not for the consumer, but Xbox, no, they're bending over because they're in, in last place. Well, they're in second place in theory, but they'll be in last place. Uh, my point to that is that's why, that's why competition is good, Calionis. So anyway, uh, Sony, listen. Listen to us. We're no ones, but please try to give cross uh, play a chance i think it will help it will help you with the consumers also give you a little bit of goodwill your system will keep selling pure and simple you you got the the casuals the casuals are buying your system it's going to continue so don't worry about it okay well um so i guess uh, that's all that needs to be said about, uh, said about that but we're going to continue talking about microsoft on here oh, and it's no. basically um you know phil spencer stating or or you know the microsoft stating that uh, the Xbox One X is not for everybody. That the Xbox One S will be the market leader for them, uh, since it will be the uh, most uh, affordable console. So they said um, the Xbox One X uh, will provide the best, uh, the very best experience uh, with you know 4K um, upscaled and you know like 1080p. And I, I would just want to do a, a quick mention, like even if you don't have a 4K TV. Uh, Xbox One X uh, would would still give you uh, better graphics than let's say uh, a PS4 uh, or Xbox One S uh, on the same kind of TV. So there there are still advantages uh, for getting the system until uh, you get a 4K TV later on. But um, it seems like it sounds like Microsoft is kind of admitting that they're not going to have as stronger as sales as they thought they would on the Xbox One X. Uh, but at the same time, they're being realist because the system does cost $500, and that's going to be a little bit steep for most of the pe uh, people. Um, they just see, you know, I guess in a better value on the Xbox One S. They still have, you know, a pretty good amount of games, even though um, they don't have too many of those, you know, first-party type games uh, lately. Uh, but uh, games are going to be compatible regardless of the console. Any game that works on the X will be working on the S. So either way, uh, they don't really lose much. But uh, it's going to be an uphill uh, climb uh, when it comes to selling the Xbox One X. And it seems to me like that's what they're saying. What do you think, Dantes? Uh, hey, Dick, what's up? want to give uh, Dick a shout out. Uh, Randall, hey, how you doing, Thank you for joining us. Uh, so uh, let's see. I agree with Phil. I think the S is going to sell more. It's the cheaper version. And they're going to they're gonna give a lot of uh, discounts this holiday season to sell a lot of Xbox, right? Uh, the only thing is that, uh, you know, Phil, I, I, I see through your, uh, through your, uh, PR, <laughs> you guys dropped out the X because you're going to have new sales from your fans. Hey, your fans are the ones who are going to drop $500 from this. They're going to be the ones that want to have the most powerful console so they can go into the comment sections and say, look at us. We have the most powerful console. F you, Sony fanboys! <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Uh, is there value in the X? I mean, it is. I mean, if you like the best, best graphics, the you know the better uh, hardware, that's good. I mean, but again, I don't agree with mid-gen refreshes. I don't agree with the Pro, and I don't agree with the X. Again, I'm old school. You buy it. You buy your system. If you're going to do mid-gen refreshes, why don't you just make the generation shorter? Like five years are fine. Like it used to be in the old days. It used to be five years, right, Carlyonis? So yeah, let's just uh, do roughly. that. 
yeah, five years. Let's just do five years, and then you bring a new console, and that's it, and, and everybody's happy. I, I don't agree with mid-gen refreshes. And then the X, by their account, is a mid-gen refresh. Some people saying it's a big jump. It should be a new generation, but they're not treating it that way. So in that sense, I do agree with Phil. The S is the one that they're going to sell the most, but the X is going to have good sales because they're counting on those uh, fans to rebuy their system. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just just to, um, um, the system is going to be a hard sell uh, because it is $500. So by that point, they're probably going to have sales for the Xbox One S where they're going to give it away for like maybe like 250 with a game included or, or something like that. But, you know, uh, we'll probably see a little bit more when it comes to, uh, you know, Black Friday and, you know, before uh, Christmas and all. So, I, I don't know. Like, um, it's um, it feels like they are, you know, to me, they're turning the top away. They should say, oh, uh, we have a brand new console coming out. It's going to be the most powerful console. Uh, it's going to be, you know, like we've already sold you know, X amount of pre-orders. Like, they already said that they have uh, sold out of it. Uh, so... Why not just say, I mean, just keep pushing it and, and being more confident with it instead, instead of just saying, well, uh, we don't feel like, you know, the, the, the S will be the market leader, not, not the X. Um, so, and, and that the S is, is not for everyone. I mean, I, I would not have said something like that, but I mean, PR departments need to work differently depending on, you know, on the company. So who knows? Uh, but uh, moving along, and this is about uh, Super Mario Odyssey and... Basically, it's Woo! been the uh, the best selling game uh, on every single Amazon store in the world. So uh, you have uh, the game being number one in the U.S., uh, Canada, U.K., uh, France, uh, basically every single territory or most of them for the most part, and the biggest one in Japan. Uh, it is the the biggest selling game uh, and number one on all those lists. So. People are already excited about uh, Mario. It is a new Mario game, so of course, you know, people were already going to be excited about it and picking it up. Uh, but at the same time, you see the Edge review, uh, you see the uh, the Famitsu review, and it's re receiving you know great uh, scores overall. So uh, we haven't seen all of them uh, because you know some reviewers did start getting it uh, today, uh, I believe yesterday as well. So we're going to see uh, some of those uh, the day before the game comes out, but. I mean, I can't, I can't be more excited about the game. There's nothing else that needs to be shown. I just want it to be the 27th already so I can pick it up. So, uh, <clears throat> a little bit of get in and get out here. Crossover, baby. Uh, no, it just shows you that Mario Odyssey is selling great. And uh, here's the funny part. That's just pre-orders for Amazon, right? Yes. And it's already outsold for the year because the list is for the year. It already outsold most of the big titles that came out this year. That is impressive. There being some big hitters this year. I mean, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, uh, 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 Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, so there being some big games that came out this year. Persona 5. Uh, uh, what else, Calionis? Uh, we can add to that. Uh, anyway. Well, the uh, the Dragon Quest games that sold greatly on in Japan, so and we'll yeah, see how Dragon they, uh, they do in the US. Big, big, but I'm just saying, big games, big trip, triple A three. games, and it's and it's uh it it's already outsold a lot of those games. So, uh, well, let me see. Uh, Random Gaming just said, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, uh, yep, yeah, that's again, good good numbers. I, I'm pumped. I'm I'm like you. 27, here we come. Let's start. Let's just play this. Let's play the damn game. Just, hey, Nintendo, just release it a week early, please. Come on, do, do me a favor. <laughs> so go ahead, Carlos, for the next one. Okay, so going over for the next one, and we're talking about uh, Destiny 2. Uh, it was by far, uh, well, I'll say uh, probably the, um, the biggest release uh, on this part of the year. And... They, it's, I mean, they're talking about how the game has been selling significantly fewer copies, physical copies, uh, in the first month uh, than when compared to the original. So uh, they said that um, the sales on physical front fell by 50% uh, compared to uh, the original game. So should that be something that you know, should be worrying uh, them, or is, is that okay? Or do you feel like people are uh, more so moving to digital? 
so Destiny, right? Yes, Destiny 2 has sold. Um, oh, no, I'm just saying okay. Destiny. Yeah. <sighs> yes. I, I think I know Destiny is big and it's going to make really good money with all the loot boxes. Here we go, loot boxes and stuff that are in the game. Uh, I think it didn't sell as much as because the hype is not as big as it as it was on the first game, right? The first game was Bungie just leaving uh, Xbox camp and one going multi-plat. Uh, and, and so there was a lot of hype in that game. So I think there's the hype is not there, but it's still going to make a lot of money. It's, they're still fine. I think... They have this, they have a rabid fan base that's gonna make the game successful. So yeah, if setting a little bit less, I mean, who cares? It's like the the first game, you know, coming out of the sequel. Uh, anyway, uh, Random Gaming Channel gave us a little bit of 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 of, of news here. Uh, he's just letting us know that PlayStation has been working on Star Wars Battlefront 2 PlayStation 4, which is basically a, uh, the the console itself with the Inferno Squad logo in the middle. But for now. He's keeping his Darth Vader edition. I think that's that was a, that was a good looking console to, to say the least. I think you're making the right choice. Choice, but uh, it is also coming that that new edition is coming with a Star Wars Battlefront 2 edition controller and the game. Thank you for that. Random Gaming Channel 13. Yeah, awesome. And Thank Random you for Gaming Channel news, extra news to give out tonight. Yeah, and I'll say you know, please don't change that console for the Call of Duty World War II version because. Uh, <laughs> That, that is one ugly ass console for sure. Yes, so don't don't pick that one up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go to the next piece of news, Calion. Okay, and over the next uh, the next one is uh, Overwatch. It, it's uh, actually it's passed over thirty five million players, and you know um, for the game. So this it's just crazy. It's like it feels like like Grand Theft Auto Five all over again. A game that just continues to sell over and over again, and it, there's no stopping it. So. Uh, it is uh, one of the, uh, I mean, the premier uh, hero shooters, uh, how they call it, or you know, the premier hero shooter, and it's obliterated everything that uh, has gone against it. But 35 million players since the game launched in uh, May 2016 is a pretty big deal. So what do you say about that, Dantes? And hey, how you doing, Spoon? Welcome to the chat room. So it, I'm not a huge fan of Overwatch. Have you played Overwatch, Calionis? Uh I I mean I've tried the uh, the the I mean the uh, the free weekend uh, for the game, so but not I mean it's not something that I really love playing a lot. Uh, the one I actually played a little more was uh, Paladins. Uh, it is similar. Uh, it is a pretty de uh, good game, but it's not one that I'm gonna be playing a lot. I mean, it's not my type of game. Um, so. For me, I know Overwatch is big, but I'm not a multiplayer guy, so it's not like I'm going to spend hours and hours on playing the same game in the same game. And when you're a big mm -hmm. multiplayer guy, that's what you do. You play with your friends. You have a lot of fun with that same game, and you keep playing it over and over and over so you can level up your character. I cannot do that. I have work, and that takes a lot of time. <laughs> so when I get home, I want to play new experiences. I want to play new games. That's why I like single-player games. Come in. Again, my story, I have my gameplay, I'm boom, boom, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, I'm done, let's move to the next game, because I, my backlog is huge, I want to get through the games as soon as possible, right, so that's why I'm never gonna gravitate to games like Overwatch, uh, and the games that I mul play multiplayer is mostly because I'm trying to get my plat and get out of there, so I <laughs> like games like <laughs> The Last of Us, where I play the multiplayer just enough to get my trophies, and then I was done now. Thank you for the last of us making some multiplayer uh, trophies. I had an enjoyment by playing multiplayer. But as soon as I got my plat, baby, I was done. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm out. Uh, but again, because I'm not going to be playing the same game over and over again. I want to keep changing up. I have a huge backlog. So Overwatch, it looks fun. Like I'm showing gameplay right now. It, it looks fun. You, you like that multiplayer scene, competition. And, and this, is, this game is where lawbreakers fail, right? The characters have have personalities, there's a full-blown story between all the characters. What Lawbreaker seems to just being thrown together and trying to get some of that Overwatch, uh, you know, uh, fame, right? But, you know, you cannot outdo Overwatch. You cannot be Overwatch, basically. So Overwatch planned this really well. Blizzard already has a rabid fan base with them. So I think lawbreakers should uh, should take a different approach next time when they make their, their future games, just trying to be something unique. Uh, so, but anyway, that's my reaction to Overwatch. 
Maybe someday if Overwatch comes to the Switch, Caliones can go in and, uh, and play a little bit of Overwatch and stream Overwatch for the peeps. What do you think about that, Caliones? Do you, let's, do, let's go with that. Do you think there's hope? There's, it's like Grand Theft Auto. It's like, like, it's like washing Bigfoot. Do you think Overwatch will come to the Switch? Uh, I mean, I, I would say like they, they probably don't need to right now. But eventually, uh, they, I mean, they, the game's going to be saturated when it comes to the other consoles. So uh, it all it all depends on um, on how the uh, they view the game. So now uh, you have it on the Xbox One, you have it on the PS4. Uh, you make it uh, compatible, and to take advantage of the PS4 Pro, and now you have the Xbox One X, and they're going to make uh, improvements for that version as well. So I mean, it's going to get get to a point where it's going to be too far uh, the um, the game and what it demands uh, on the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X uh, compared to the Nintendo Switch. But at the same time, you have games like Doom uh, coming out on Switch. So I feel like anything is possible. Um, I I don't know. Like it, I feel like we're probably going to see another type of game first before seeing Overwatch. But Overwatch, if they could, they should go ahead and try to go, you know, make it over to the console and uh, to the Switch before anybody else. Uh, at the same time, I feel like probably the first one uh that we would see you know it could probably be either you know like a paladins or uh like a little breakers or, or something like that especially like a little breakers that um uh, they really you know they talk really bad about xbox uh the xbox brand uh and so, so now you don't really see that one coming out on the xbox because nobody's going to want to buy it uh they could benefit by coming out on the switch because it would be the first type of hero shooter that the system has uh, Overwatch, um, I'm I'm not too confident about seeing it on the console. I've always said from the, from the first the other day that Nintendo needs to have Grand Theft Auto V, Overwatch, Rocket League. Um, they got Rocket League coming. Um, there's rumors about Grand Theft Auto V, uh, but Overwatch, um, I hope it does. I just don't know if if it will or not. Okay, okay. Uh, let's, let's go with the, uh, let's show our ugly faces. Are you ready to come back, Caliones, from... Yeah, go ahead. ...about Overwatch? Are you ready to show your face? I guess that's Okay, well... Part. Woo, we're back! I, Look at that! I this. Look at our beautiful faces. We're back. Uh, we've been going in the chat, going a little bit, having some fun, talking about loot boxes. Uh... Uh, I guess, uh, ran uh, Random Gaming, let me see how I understood your question. Uh, he likes to know our feedback. On rather Star Wars Battlefront 2, is Sony trying to make money or is it a good idea and better in some way, like the addition of the console? Uh, I think if I understood your question, you're saying if 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 Sony is doing it right by you know creating all these special edition consoles, I mean I mean they pay and you have to remember this random gaming they pay a lot for the marketing rights, so Sony is gonna market Star Wars up the wazoo. And they're gonna sell you 20 different million console editions. So people, I, I you know, people who are a huge fan of Star Wars and they want to own every special PlayStation edition are gonna buy two and three consoles because they have like you, the Darth Vader edition, and 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 then and then the, the other one has the Rogue One symbol edition, and then the other one has the Anakin Skywalker edition. I don't know. I don't know all the editions of Star Wars. I'm just making shit up now. But but that's that's the point. Sony is trying to tap into the Star Wars fan base to buy more consoles. And again, Sony pay a lot of money for that exclusivity. They're going to milk it. They're going to milk it. Anything to add to that, Calionis? Uh No, I mean, it's, it's that, uh, I mean, every console, uh, they're going to have, you know, marketing rights to, you know, certain games, uh, except for Nintendo. I, I mean, I haven't really heard them have marketing rights on, on uh, specific third-party games, but uh, that's because they usually don't do bundles. I mean, they may do uh, like a Monster Hunter bundle in Japan, but... Uh, other than that, uh, you don't really see anything from them, uh, especially here in the uh, in North America. But um, is they're, they're they're always going to try to do uh, whatever is possible to uh, to be the leaders on well, with certain games uh, to make sure that you know that game is going to continue selling consoles because you know Star Wars Battlefront 2 it's a game that will sell consoles and they and Sony just want to make sure that their console is going to be the one uh, that will sell because they have the incentive. Of having the special skins and colors and and all of that. So, uh, I mean, it's, if they can take advantage of it, you know, more power to them. They're spending money uh, to make sure that they get those things. But um, well, uh, we'll see how I mean how that affects sales um, for the game. But uh, moving along, 
And this one is, uh, it was actually a, a pretty big news uh, that came out today. And it is that uh, IGN has acquired uh, the Humble Bundle. Um, so Humble Bundle, uh, you know that it, they you know, would do the special sales for games, but they also got into publishing games as well. And now IGN owns them. So uh, you know, we'll see how that affects um, I mean, the, uh, the, the company itself. But they, you know, IGN, I mean, IGN is saying that they're not going to change uh, how Humble Bundle uh, works. Uh, they're going to continue letting them do uh, what they do, at least you know, in the short term. Uh, so it won't, it won't be you know, for a while until we see if they have anything else uh, that they may change. But uh, what do you think about this? Do you think it's a big deal um, or it won't make any difference? I, I didn't know about Humble Bundles before this, so I don't know how big of a deal is this. I mean, IGN is a corporation, and they bought another corporation, and uh, mergers happen all the time in the corporate mm -hmm. world. So I don't see a big deal about it, but people who use the bundle probably are pissed because they, they're scared that, that IGN will change them. And that happens. When a corporation buys the other, there's going to be some changes, no matter what IGN says, that, oh, we're not doing anything to change them. That's, mm -hmm. that's not true. Uh, so we'll see. we'll see what happens. You just don't have to take a wait-and-see attitude anywhere. Yeah, well, and uh, going over to another one, and it's uh, in regards to Star Wars as well, and it's that uh, EA um, has shut down Visceral Games, which means that the Star Wars games that they had is going to be moved over to a different uh, team, and uh, they, haven't, they have uh, Amy Henning uh, refocusing on... Um, I guess uh, on a different game, but it seems like they're gonna go away from the linear story-based uh, game and make it into a multiplayer game. So this is, I mean, Amy Hennings, uh, for those people that don't know, she is, uh, she used to be a director and writer for the Uncharted games. Uh, and there, I mean, she is somebody that is great storyteller, great uh, managing other games and has given us one of the uh, best experiences and one of the best series uh, you know, ever, uh, you know, regardless of you know, consoles. But now they're taking you know, the power away from her in, and trying to make it into, I mean, perhaps not like Battlefront, but into a more multiplayer-based uh, game. Uh, do you think this is a mistake? Uh, what do you, how do you feel about this, Dante? So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the news right now quickly. So, Visceral Game was the one who was working on? Um, yes. Uh, they were working on, uh, well, it was an untitled Star Wars game. So, so here's, here's an update. So, EA responded to IGN requests for comment in regards to Henning standing with the project, saying the company is in discussion with Amy about her next move. As for... As for how much of the already completed development will carry over, an EA spokesperson said, we'll be continuing to use great deal of the work that has been done today. The assets of the game that has already been built will be the foundation for the new game. <laughs> Despite the move away from story-based linear game, uh, Sundul says we will maintain the stunning visuals. Fuck. On the city of the Star Wars universe and focus on bringing... The Star Wars story to life. See, this is why people hate EA. This is this is the shit why people hate, hate EA. Because now that I'm remembering everything, this is the game that I was waiting for. The Amy Hennings game with the linear focus Star Wars game mm. that was going to blow us away by with the and, storytelling. Right? And I'm going to have a drink while, while you talk about that. I feel like having a drink. Yeah, yeah. It's the difference you don't, you don't add alcohol to this. Mm. Uh, you should probably. Uh, I don't understand why EA is doing this. Doesn't Uncharted... Okay, as, uh, I'm going to ask you this question, Caliones. Isn't Uncharted a single-player game? Yes. Does he have multiplayer? Yes, it does. Isn't it a multiplayer really popular? Yes, it is. <laughs> so what is the issue? I just don't get it. What is the issue? The, the, make the single-player game and develop a good multiplayer uh, on, on side with it. I just don't get it. I yeah, don't get it, EA... Is I mean, if, if you already got Battlefront uh, and Battlefront 2, do you really need another Star Wars multiplayer focus game? Um, no. Uh, unless you're making like a Rogue Squadron game or, or something like that, you do not need another multiplayer focus game. Uh, so why do you need to 
I mean, just stop whatever it is that they were working on, just scrapping and start with something. And they're talking about how they're going to be keeping the assets. That basically tells you, yeah, they the models and the graphics that we created we're going to keep those but then they're probably just going to change how the entire game works so i don't, I don't know uh, i feel uh, really disappointed with this and uh i mean i i, I saw the other uh, reaction from people over at neo gav and everywhere else and they they were not happy either. they were i mean of course very vocal uh, about how they felt about it but I mean, I, I, I now I really hate uh, EA having this franchise. At first, uh, when they got the you know the rights, I was thinking about, hey, uh, you know they have Bioware, so maybe they can have Bioware work on another uh, Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, oh, they got Emmy Henning. She's going to be working on a single player Star Wars. It can't get any better than this. But now we're seeing the uh, the real reason why we never wanted EA to have it. So it it sucks. It really sucks. The uh, sad part is that uh, they, they could have come out with something special, right? Amy, Amy Haining, I trust her. She did Uncharted, like I said before. That it was going to be a good single-player experience. I think, Calionis, you're going to have to uh, keep playing the Star Wars Star Wars: The Force Unleashed from last <laughs> gen as your last good, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, Star well, Wars. Yeah, uh, single-player sing focus game. Yeah, yeah. single-player fo focus game. So no lightsaber for us, Calionis. We're just going to have to sit here. And again, I don't play multiplayer games, so I don't give a flying hell of a, of a battlefront. Uh, so this this is just sad for me because this is the Star Wars games that I was waiting for. But anyway, EA, I'm not buying games from you. Anyway, I don't care. I hate you guys anyway for a long time. I haven't bought shit from you in a long time, and I'm, I'm going to keep that stand. And this is the reason why. Go ahead to the next piece of news, Calione. Okay, well, and this is going to be over uh, the last one, uh, the last piece of news that we have tonight. And it is that Sony opens a new label on ties, and the first games will be for the PS4, PC, and the Nintendo Switch. Uh, so, you know, I mean, they, you know, the company is part of the Sony Music Entertainment, and they offered a, a press release stating that they will be dedicated to indie type of games, and that one of the uh, their consoles that they're going to be publishing the games for is going to be the Nintendo Switch. So. Uh, good, bad. Uh, what do you think about this? I think it's fine. I, I think people making a bigger deal online than this that it needs to be. Sony's just opening a, a side division where they're gonna focus more of a indie type of games, and the one indie type of games is you mm -hmm. can get a good amount of return from a small budget. That is pure and simple. Yes. And if you see the Switch, how well it's selling indie games, why won't you want that piece of that pie? I just it wouldn't boggle my mind. PC always had a good indie scene. Why you wouldn't put it on PC? And then PlayStation. PlayStation, put it on PlayStation and make some money. You're not going to get your last of us on the Switch. Let's clarify, people, okay? Take it easy. Uh, uh, I, I, I think you're going to get good indie games on the Switch. And, and it seems like Sony just seems like, in my opinion, like Sony and, and Nintendo are okay. I mean, they're, they're not buddy buddies, but they can stand each other. It seems like Sony... Hates Microsoft more. I don't know why, <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. It, I think it's fine. It's not a big deal. I, I don't think it's a huge deal. Now the funny part though is everybody was saying Nintendo was going third party, and, and Sony was the first one from the three. <laughs> the, well, Microsoft went first, I guess, with Minecraft, but well, but but yeah. Minecraft was already yeah. third party when Microsoft bought it, so it doesn't yeah. count in a sense. So. <laughs> but hey, I mean, either way. Uh, like you said, this is some you know a, a real way for Sony to make games, not put you know too much you know not with a big budget, with a smaller budget, but have a, a high pro you know profit margin by having a feature on the PS4, uh, on the uh, you know PC and the Nintendo Switch. Uh, I mean, I don't see the Xbox um, no, One included on here. So <laughs> it seems like Xbox rapes raped. Uh, I don't know. Chuhei Yoshida's mom or something like that because they, they don't they, they're not putting anything on the Xbox. They put it everywhere except the Xbox. No cross platform play either for Xbox either. <laughs> so so it's like nope, <laughs> no, we don't want you. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I, I, again, I feel kind of bad for uh, for the Xbox uh, owners because uh, Nintendo is. I mean, the Switch is selling like, like hotcakes. It has been you know the number one selling console. Uh, pretty much, you know, for the entire year, except for you know before it actually launched. 
Uh, and Xbox One, it should have all these hype uh, because of the X uh, coming out soon, but they're still having a, a you know uh, issues selling. The 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 silver lining has been Cuphead. Cuphead has been doing great, uh, selling yeah, great on Steam. But Cuphead, uh, on the wait, Xbox. wait, wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna even squash that because Cuphead sold most of it on Steam. So uh, I I don't know. I'm 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 not there yet saying the Xbox are buying Xbox fans are buying their games on the Xbox. So. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm saying like uh, regardless, it is a game that they're the the console exclusive, and it has been selling well. Uh, I'll say well, On but Steam. um. <laughs> okay. okay, what about if if we try to say at least one good thing about Microsoft before the end of the show? Uh, Microsoft has a great 4K Blu-ray player. Okay. I, yeah. I said you asked me to say something nice about the <laughs> console. I just said it. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, regardless, I'll say once the Xbox One X comes out, it will give you the best version of most of the third-party games. Um, oh, and uh, there was something interesting because uh, you know, for example, like uh, Sony has the marketing rights for FIFA. They have it for Call of Duty. They have it for Battlefront. yeah, like uh, Battlefront. Um, and I believe it was the the Battlefront Two game, if I remember correctly, that they did see the like the cartridge or the or the cart. I'm sorry, the case. For the Xbox One X version, and it did say enhanced for the Xbox One X. So uh, it is not something that uh, Microsoft or the EA can advertise because they have the marketing rights with Sony. But it seems like the games will be taking advantage of the Xbox One X. And when it comes at, at the very least, uh, you know, um, based on the graphics, uh, the F Xbox One X will give you the best looking version out of all the consoles. But they can't really have advertise it. So PC least, Master uh, Ray. But I'll, PC. Well, uh, once the X comes out, it will be more powerful than at least ninety percent of the computers uh, in 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 PC regular PC Master Ray Scaliones. Anyway, with that, <laughs> let's end the show. Let's end it. Do we do we go out in style, Caliones? Do we want to go out in style? Uh yeah, go ahead. Uh, make it, make it, make a ring, make a ring. Boo! <laughs> I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. The Force in Unison live every Tuesday, 9:30 Eastern Time. Please remember to subscribe, like, and comment so you can make these two crazy MFs happy. Also remember that we do have a Nintendo podcast called the Get In and Get Out Nintendo Podcast every Monday at 9.30 Eastern Time. Remember, if you don't want to see ugly faces, it's all good. We got a solution for you. Download over there on SoundCloud and iTunes. Rate us over there so you can show us some love. Also remember, we do have a small Facebook page called at Forcing Unison Gaming. And finally, and on this says finally, go to ChigueroSnews.com and give some clicks and love to my boy Caliones. With all that said, thank you again for joining us. Long live Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox. Good night, everybody. Okay. I say hey, have I a good say Xbox. Good night, everybody. Good. <laughs> hey, have a good night, everyone, and and long live Microsoft. No, I, I mean, mean yeah, so. sure, whatever. We we do need we do need Xbox subscribers. So if you want to, like like I'm just showing right now. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe. <laughs> good night, everyone. <laughs> good night.